Hey guys, what's going on? So we are into the update now, and first thing that we checked out was the 10 plus 1 summon is going on right now. We have 28 10 plus 1 tickets ready to be used. So we're gonna do that. We also have like 50 something single summons, but I'm also gonna save the free one for that video. But right now we are checking out the new heroes. I already quickly looked over them just to kind of get a feel for them. Uh, I kind of want to start with Shea because she seems like the sort of simplest to understand. So we're just going to go into hero info and check out her passive first because this is the thing that we can't see once we're actually fighting the dummy. And so she is a very interesting healer actually. She will stack this trance stuff up every time she uses a skill and that goes up to three times at max. In addition to healing all allies by a certain amount of HP, I guess that'll depend on either her attack power or level or both, all of her other three skills will have an additional effect to it. So her first skill is a heal over time actually because it says over eight times I never actually went into the training camp to uh, see what it looks like but we're gonna go in here and check it out you can see her auto attack here it's kind of slow it's a projectile uh, but uh, let's check out her first skill so okay so it's similar to Kaula actually but it looks like it'll last a lot longer yeah okay that was quite long and I can imagine the rest of her skills are like that as well yeah, okay. So she's definitely a heal over time, buff over time. I guess her third skill is a damage over time as well. So one thing to note is she has very long cooldowns on all three of her skills, 28 seconds for each of them. But you have to consider that eight to 10 of that is while she's casting. You can see the cooldown is going down while she's casting. And so we can wait until she's done casting to see how much time is actually left on the cooldown. It's about 20 seconds. So moving on to the specifics about her skill, this one reduces the damage taken by 35% in addition to her heal over time. If this is the fourth skill she uses, so if she has those three trance stacks already, it will double its healing effect and give them 70% damage reduction for those eight seconds. So her second skill, Blue Wind Song, is more for MP recovery than HP, and it will recover a certain amount over eight times, as well as, I guess, healing anyone with max mana. CC duration is also reduced by 50%. I think that's the only one that has something like this. Mostly it's like CC resist, so a lower chance to get CC'd, but this is duration, so no matter what, that will always be in effect. And if this skill is used when she's at max trance, every hero will have CC immunity as well as her MP recovery and heal rate boosted by 50% so that sounds pretty good just the base effect of the duration reduced by 50% of all CC's that seems like it might be very good for arena actually because CC is quite dominating there at the moment one thing I'm a little confused of is if the immunity to CC is dispellable because I know the trance stacks aren't but are the effects from the trance stacks dispellable unfortunately we can't test that and her third skill dance of red passion is a damaging skill it kind of takes the same form as all the others. It damages over eight times while giving allies an attack boost. Again, the damage of this skill as well as the attack boost are increased by 100% and all enemies' positive effects are continuously dispelled. So every time she does this burst here, I'll show it. It's like every time you see, you see that ring there going, enemies are getting dispelled. And you can see that the damage is happening to the dude there as well. So all enemies continuously dispelled. Okay, but like you probably won't be able to ever get this off in an arena though, that's the problem because you have to use skill 1, skill 2, skill 3, and then skill 3 again, or skill 3, 2, 1, then 3, etc, etc. So unless you have like a super, super wall tanky team, you'll probably never be able to get this off. Unless of course her transcendence perks or unique weapon will change that. Also we can check out real quick what trance looks like. So first using skill 1, then skill 2, and finally skill 3. And it looks like as soon as she stops dancing with her skill 3, skill 1 is back off cooldown. So we could do this now. You can see that she has 3 stacks of trance above her HP bar. So let's go ahead. It should use all 3 stacks now. It did, as a matter of fact. And this should have the added effect of 70% damage reduction and 100% more healing. So first we're going over her unique weapon and treasure. And okay, it looks like we're getting somewhere. When trance is stacked, all skill cooldown is reduced by 10% and recovers own mana by 200. So I guess after her first skill is done casting she will have a trance stack so that should reduce the cooldown it may also mean when all three are stacked and her unique treasure will silence all enemies for two seconds 
as well as giving a crit damage boost of 20% while it's casting. So her unique weapon seems somewhat important just generally because her skills have such a long cooldown, but her unique treasure doesn't seem all that important. So for skill one, neither of those seems very important. Crit resistance definitely is more PvP oriented, and I have a feeling she'll heal just fine. Skill two has a nice attack speed buff on it. Again, it doesn't seem super important. The 500 MP on light probably won't make a big difference since again, the skill cooldowns are so long. Skill three, however, has two very good transcendence perks. Skill 3 light would reduce cooldowns for everyone by 10% when it's casted, so like a world boss team, I can imagine that'd be very good. Or a 15% debuff on the enemy that increases your damage by 15%. I'm not sure if that works in the same way as like P amp and M amp, because it just says damage. And skill 4 trance, again light doesn't seem like it would be super important. I think the healing should be enough, but I can't say for sure, of course. And her skill for dark would make her do more damage, but less healing. So that might be one I would play around with if I'm going to pick her up. And her T5 dark, oh my god. This is what she needed. At the start of every battle, she starts with one trance stack, making the possibility that you can get that tranced skill 3 off. She is a very interesting character. I believe she does need her unique weapon for sure. So if you have saved up some pulls, Hope to get it if you are interested in her. If I pull her unique weapon, I'm probably gonna get her just because she's so interesting. I have pretty much every priest in the game so far, except Refi. I actually caved and bought Kaula a couple days ago for World Boss 2, so I think it's actually just Refi left. But yeah, that's all for Shea. So we're gonna be moving on to Asalisa, however you call that now, saving Crow for last. So she is a tank, looks quite like a Valkyrie, or as I said in my previous video, a female arch also works, but. So let's go ahead and look at her passive first. This will inflict Curse of the Sun when she auto attacks, and enemies with 10 stacks of this, so when she attacks 10 times, they'll receive some magic damage, as well as being blinded for two seconds and having their attack reduced by 20% for five seconds. So it doesn't look like this correlates with any of her other skills, so just try and keep that in mind when we go into the training dummy place. Her passive is really just a passive in this case, some extra debuffs and such. You can see on the dummy it's stacking up there, and when it goes to 10, there, you can see the blind there for like a very short amount of time, but the attack reduction stays for quite a while, actually long enough for her to get those 10 stacks back, as long as she's not herself stunned for a while. And then we have Judgment of the Sun. How am I supposed to TLDR this? Well, let's go ahead and look at it first. It Shards of ethereal death on your soul. All right, there was that. It looks actually quite long. While she's doing that, she'll heal allies, increase their P defense, deal M damage, decrease their M def, and at the end of it, she'll heal nearby allies, deal more damage, and knock the enemies in range down. So quite a lot of effects. We have healing, we have CC, and we have damage. She also has a buff here, Blessing of the Sun, which will go to the hero with the highest attack, reducing cooldown of all skills by 20% and increasing attack for 15 seconds. 20 second cooldown, so it has a 75% uptime which is decent. We can check out that animation as well. Here it goes. All right, pretty sweet. I really like the rainbow, sort of light rainbow color going on here. And this one's just a simple stun. Let's check it out. Quite a long casting time, but uh, cool, cool regardless. Now we're checking out her unique weapon and unique treasure. Wow, it's a very interesting effect. So she'll make a contract with the ally with the highest attack, so at the beginning of the battle, those two are connected, regardless of who gets more attack later on through buffs, etc, etc. So the highest attack hero will get 6% of her defense, and she will get 6% of the highest attack's attack. So that's actually very interesting, wow. I mean, 6% isn't that much, but again, it is at zero star, so who knows, I mean like 10, 12, percent could be quite interesting for sure and and her unique treasure guardian's trumpet she'll gain immunity to cc while in use and increases p ooh oh and increases p def boost and m def reduction by 20 percent that sounds very important because that's a long casting skill you saw her third skill just standing there while those things are raining down i don't know why i assumed she would just be immune to cc while doing that but you need her unique treasure for that, and it sounds very important. Checking out her transcendence perks now. Skill 1 can come with a nice attack speed boost, or a 2 second cooldown reduction. 
Um, the attack speed might be very nice. I mean, it's 350 only for five seconds, but it's also a short cooldown skill. Depending on if she's capable of doing a decent amount of damage, I would probably get that. Even not, I mean, it does increase mana generation as well. It's probably not super necessary, but I'd have to actually play with her to find that out. Blessing of the Sun can be spread to two allies at an increased mana cost of one which is pretty good, or you can attach a cleanse to it to that one with the highest attack. I'd probably go for the light perk because besides give, giving them an attack bonus, they'll also reduce the cooldowns of, by 20%, which is pretty big. And her skill three, you can reduce the mana cost by one or increase the duration of the imdef reduction effect by five seconds. One thing I actually didn't notice is that her imdef reduction is a flat number, not a percentage like most are. So she's a little bit like fill up in this case. Sadly, only five to 10 seconds every 25 seconds, unlike Philop's constant shred. I think she's the only one that does that with magic defense. Someone correct me if, if I'm wrong though. And her skill four, you can buff the attack reduction to 30% or you can lessen the amount of stacks you need to activate Curse of the Sun. I don't know if I'd go for either of those, to be honest, neither of them sound super good right now because mostly she's gonna be attacking the front line or the tank and an attack reduction on them in most cases isn't gonna do that much. Of course, we're just talking about PVP. So like in World Boss, for example, that could actually be quite good or Guild Raid. I'm mostly thinking about Arena because that's like the meta space, you know. And her T5 Dark, I personally don't like at all. Three seconds every 15 seconds, she'll grant P damage immunity. So if it were all damage immunity, I would be all for it, even when it is three out of 15 seconds. But when it's just P damage for three out of 15 seconds, it might be okay if you know you're going to a place where there's only P damage. So overall, I'm not too sure. Her, well, like I said, her unique weapon is very interesting, but uh, just first impressions wise, I'm not super impressed with her skill set and all of that. She seems kind of uh, average. Uh, besides her unique weapon, like I said, her third skill is also very interesting, but the fact you need the unique treasure to be immune to CC during it, that's a little bit of a downer. Why did my session expire? All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to Crow now. What? Did it just say the server is under maintenance? Dude. Well, let's check what this is about. We may as well. All right, looks like some people aren't acquiring Hero's Light. So that's the item required to transcend, and that's happening apparently to Sonia, Scarlet, and Miriana, and also Shea's Red Passion Dance. Tooltip is being displayed abnormally, thigh in Japanese only, but it was in English for me, so I don't know. More rubies, though, so whatever. <laughs> well, we did just finish up with the tank. Asalisa, however she's called. Why do they always have to be so hard? And I don't really want to sit here on the home screen for an hour while I'm waiting, so so I guess I'm gonna have to do crow separately, which I guess isn't a bad thing, because this video is getting pretty long anyway. So yeah, tell me what you think about those two heroes in the comments down below. I'll get to crow a little bit later. Apparently when the server's back up, while it's down, I'm gonna be editing this one, I guess. Yeah, leaving a like if you did happen to enjoy would also be greatly appreciated. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.